Item SCP-2386, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-2386 is to be kept on Site-32 in a sealed enclosure. Any increases and changes in the hive's shape and pattern are to be reported to the head researcher. Instances of SCP-2386 found in the wild are to be dealt with MTF Lambada 7, aka Swarm Queens. Male personnel are not allowed on site except for testing purposes. <laughs> Description SCP-2386 is a species of diminutive humanoid entities. All instances vaguely resemble simplistic humanoid dolls made of fabric commonly ranging between 7 cm and 9 cm in height. Instances of 2386 have also, also have identical recurring patterns in their torsos, most prominently pink in coloration, and a face which appears to be stitched on. Autopsies of dead instances reveal similarities to both dermato Dermatobia hominis, aka the human botfly, and Bomyx mori, aka the silkworm. The wings are similar to those of a butterfly or moth, and are capable of flight. Studies have shown SCP-2386 exoskeleton is composed of a durable material which is almost identical to cotton fiber. Wild, wild instances of 2386 are found to live in hives, resembling similar pattern seat cushions, the largest known instance being in the shape of a sofa. Hives of SCP-2386 are common found near suburban environments, sometimes even with occupied housing. SV-2386 will emerge periodically from those structures to feed, usually on other smaller insects, and seek out hosts for reproductive purposes. Despite their benign appearance, 2386 are hostile if approached by males of any species. 2386 will engage their target by extending scissor-like claws from, from their hands and swarming the target. Conversely, females in the presence of 2386 will be respected and occasionally cared for, presenting them with small gifts and playing with them. During the spring summer seasons, 2386 will enter their mating season and cease hostilities against males and treat them in a similar manner to females. Males approached by 2386 during this period will be treated better than females. After accumulatizing to 2386, a single instance will cut an incision into the male subject and attach between 30 to 65 eggs under the skin. Within 24 hours, the affected area will be covered in a material resembling pattern cloth. Tests reveal this material is biological and genetically identical to material recovered from 2386 hives. As the week, weeks during gestation and birth process, this growth will spread outwards from the initial sting. Eventually, the growth will be split open from within, with adult forms of 2386 emerging fully formed. The following interview is with D-2386-181, male subject used in testing currently three weeks into SCP-2386 gestation period. Interviewer, Dr. Redacted Shaw. Interviewee, D-2386-181. Dr. Shaw, good morning, D-2386-181. D-2386-181. Yeah, hi, Doc. You say you've been having recurring dreams. Ever since I got this thing, it indicates affected area on right arm. It wasn't that bad at first. Please explain. Okay, so I'm in my bunk, right? And, like, it's exactly the same as it, it is when I'm awake. Same lights, same walls, whatever, and... There's this giant versions of those things you got in there. Giant. Yeah, they're like as big as you or me. Not, you know, bug-sized. So they're surrounding my bunk and I can't move. 
Normally in sleep paralysis. I don't know, maybe, but I can't move, and they're like, and they're like stood over me, staring with that sewn-on smile of, their, of theirs, and I can't, and I can hear these voices, not like coming from them, but they're there, and they're telling me what a good job I'm doing and stuff like that. I see. Actually, last night they did something different. Another one came in. Another. It, it had something with it. It looked like a baby one. I beg your pardon. It was it was all wrapped up in this white cloth. They said something about wanting to show me what I was working towards. They pulled back the cloth over its head, and it was a fucking bug's head. Woke me right, right the fuck up. Thank you, D Dash. 2386-181. That would be all for today. Hey, Doc. Could you send someone to look at this? I... I think something's moving under there. Following D-2386-181's interview, surgery was carried out on the affected area. Results showed that premature instances of 2386 matched the description given. Instances labeled 2386-1 and kind of looked for a later study. After surgery, D-2386-181 insisted on visiting 2386 enclosure again. D-2386-181 became violent upon being denied access. After being subdued and returned to quarters, D-2386-181 displayed depression-like symptoms and made references to Dash-1 as being lost. Addendum. As of redacted, the remains of 2386 Hive, dating back to Redacted, were discovered in abandoned farm in Redacted. Unlike current 2386 Hives, the Hive recovered resembled a solid wicker basket. While most 2386 within the Hive were had, de had deteriorated, several intact ones revealed these instances had an exoskeleton similar in shape and texture to wheat, and a similar humanoid shape resembling corn dollies. Similarly, as of redacted, MTF Lambada 7 encountered a hive of 2386. Unlike they contained specimens, these instances had an exoskeleton resembling redacted dolls and appeared to be constructed from a material resembling plastic. A portion of the hive has been taken for, for study as have several instances of this new breed. All right, that's it of that anomaly. So we will go over here real quick. And you were correct, bookworm. Boom! That's the thumbnail. However, there's one problem with the thumbnail. It's a woman. When they uh, when they lay eggs in men, not women. So you were correct. I'm gonna have to say a four for the thumbnail. But 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 tits. <laughs> Do you agree? Four. Yep. All right. <laughs> that was a very easy four. All right. So let's go down here. Why is that open? Shut the fuck up, YouTube. Anyways, uh, yep. They have the license. Just over-sexualized and not even more accurate. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'm not... I'm gonna be... I'm kind of worried... What they're gonna do with it. So here we go. Samantha knew she wasn't supposed to be poking around in the abandoned houses. But her curiosity always took control when something seemed odd or out of place. This area of town had been blocked off and quarantined by some government-like agency almost 10 years ago. 
They had been told there was an ongoing gas leak or toxic waste issue. People had believed the story, but as the years passed, they became more suspicious of what was really going on. Welcome what? back. Your host as always, Professor Lucius. Today, I bring you SCP-2386, Pink Ladies. The house was derelict and seemed like it had long ago been pillaged for anything of worth. There was hardly anything left, and by the looks of the whiskey bottles on the floor, some homeless people had been living here. What did appear a bit odd was that one of the bottles was practically full still. With all the empty bottles strewn about the house, it didn't seem likely that whoever had been drinking them would leave a perfectly good bottle behind. Besides that, there was a backpack nearby the couch. Wait, the couch? Hardly any furniture, no TV and empty shelves, but a perfectly good couch? What? It had some unique floral and stitched pattern on it, which wasn't typical. If anything, it appeared custom made. What was that? In the corner of her eye, she thought she saw something move. Hello? Is someone there? No reply. She hesitantly moved towards the staircase where she had seen the movement. As she peered around the corner, she saw a shadow on the staircase. It was tiny, like a doll. As she moved around the corner, she saw the cutest little doll sitting on the stairs. Aww. As she reached to pick it up, it stepped back. Startled, she pulled her hand back. Hello? The doll tilted its head and stepped forward. It smiled at her and pulled out a piece of candy from behind its back and gave it to Samantha. What was this magic? As she reached for the candy, coming down the stairs was another three of these lovely dolls. They bounced their way down to the other doll, smiling and waving. The next few hours flew by without Samantha realizing. She played with the dolls all afternoon. It was like a dream come true. What little girl didn't wish that their dolls could play with them? From outside, she heard a crash and a yell. Outside the window, she saw the shadows of three men walking past the house. Two of them appeared to be wearing some sort of helmets. As she turned back, she took a deep breath. Floating. Mere inches from her Ew. face was one of the dolls. It had wings. Not only that, but its hands had been replaced by sharp claws resembling scissors. Its eyes glowed and pulsed with anger, but it wasn't looking at her. It was looking past her at the window and the men outside. The man in front motioned to continue on, and the three of them left. As soon as they were out of earshot, the doll retracted its claws and its face returned to normal. It slowly floated back down to the what? floor to be joined by its friends yeah. who had hid behind the couch. Where are supposed to be dolls? Point, it was starting to get dark, and Samantha thought she best head home. Truth be told, the scissors and wings had creeped her out a little, and she felt it prudent to end her day's journey now. After all, she wasn't even supposed to be here, and those men outside seemed like they could be dangerous. As the months wore on, she continued making visits to her new little friends. They were constantly giving her gifts, the last one being a beautiful blue gem. They had never harmed her, and only occasionally had she seen their scissor hands again. Only when those same men passed the house. She had managed to get a closer look at them. They seemed like some sort of police force, escorting a doctor or a scientist. She assumed they had been responsible for the quarantine in the area, and perhaps that's why the dolls didn't like them. What's that? Where'd you get it? Arthur had asked her. Samantha twisted her mouth into a frown. She had been dying to tell someone about her little friends. However, she wasn't sure if it was safe for them, or even him. It had been her little secret, but Arthur had always been trustworthy. You promise to keep this a secret? Arthur nodded anxiously. Okay. These dolls gave it to me, in the quarantine zone. Arthur frowned and looked uneasy. Who gave you the what and the where? Shut up! I'm serious! Arthur broke out in laughter. <laughs> Fine, don't believe me. You won't be getting any gems. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, show me. Samantha hesitated, once again unsure if it was a good idea. Come on, you know you can trust me. Samantha nodded hesitantly. Okay, we'll go next week when school's out. Hello? Nothing was there. No sound, no movement. Samantha called out again. I brought a friend. He's safe. He won't hurt you. Behind her, Arthur was smirking. However, a moment later his mouth was agape in awe. From behind the couch, 
a doll walked out. He couldn't believe it. She hadn't been lying. It flew up into the air and then towards them. Okay. As it floated inches from his nose, it pulled out a purple gem and offered it to Arthur. That wouldn't happen. This would not him. happen. They would be aggressive. Cause they're not. He's not a girl or a woman. They would attack. Making them giddy and sleepy. Ow! Arthur sat up with a start. As he looked oh, at showing his stomach, the breeding he thing. saw one of the dolls coming out from under his shirt. What are you doing down there? The doll simply smiled and offered him a candy. <laughs> okay, thanks. The next day, Arthur noticed a strange growth around his stomach, near where the doll had been. It was odd, like a cloth patchwork was forming, but it didn't hurt and didn't seem to be infected. As Never the summer been. continued on, more the... Samantha and Arthur came back numerous times to play with their little friends. He had shown them the patch, but the dolls had smiled and pulled his shirt back down and offered him more treats and gifts. They didn't seem worried, and somehow this put Arthur's mind at ease. As school resumed, the two hadn't had much time to visit their little friends in a while. Actually, it had been weeks. We should go see them, at least to check if they're okay. Really? I've got so much homework right now. Come on, just a few hours. Didn't you say you wanted to ask them about the patch in your stomach anyway? That's true. It seems like it's bigger. They pretty much okay. got rid of the... Tomorrow then. Hmm. Their little friend seemed happy to see them, especially Arthur. Okay, it's not as they bad seemed like so they were far. nurturing him, taking care of previous him, almost like caregivers. Samantha felt a little jealous. She had found them first, after all. Yeah, but it was the... fine. They were still sweet and adorable. It's the breeding season. The door flew open. It was that scientist and his troops. Lambda Seven, Swarm Queens, secure the children. Don't harm them. You, go to the dolls. Calm them down. Don't hurt them if you can avoid it. The troops came in and grabbed the children, hoisting them away. The other man in the orange jumpsuit slowly approached the dolls with his hands outstretched. The last thing Samantha saw was a doll's scissor hands as they swarmed him. Hello, children. My name is Dr. Kloss. Are you both feeling okay? Why are they in harming? gaming chairs? Arthur and Samantha looked at each other and shook their heads. Okay, you've been going there for a while, haven't you? Yes, sir. Don't worry, I'm not upset at you. Can you explain why they didn't harm you? They tore my man to bits, but seemed to not have harmed either of you at all. No, sir. They never tried to harm us. Kloss frowned. Okay. Well, I better get you two home, eh? Amnestics and send them home. They aren't injured. Arthur woke up the next morning. How'd he get home? What had happened yesterday? In fact, it felt like pieces of his memory were missing from months ago. It all seemed like a blur. His head was a little woozy. Weird. Perhaps Samantha would know. I've got no idea. I remember meeting you after school and going to the quarantine zone. And the rest? The rest is hazy. Same. Weird. Maybe that hmm. toxic gas story was real. Yeah, maybe. Arthur spent the rest of the day on his bed, daydreaming and playing games. He noticed okay. his side itching, but kept on playing. The itching got worse. It was probably nothing. He'd take a look in a minute. Suddenly, he felt a sharp, searing pain in his side. He yelled out and looked down at his side. His shirt started to turn red with blood. Something was moving underneath it. He slowly peeled back his shirt. If they're in SCP-2386 are a species of humanoid entities resembling dolls. DNA testing has shown similarities to the human botfly and silkworm. They have a set of wings similar to a butterfly or moth and all contain identical patterns on their torsos. They live in hives built to resemble furniture, usually close to suburban environments. They are kind and playful with oh my God. any species, but are openly hostile to males producing a set of scissor-like claws and swarming with intent to kill. 
the exception being during spring and summer when they enter their mating season. During this period, they will treat males the same as females. Once accustomed to them, they will open an incision in the male and place 30 to 65 eggs within them. The incision will heal over to resemble cloth. Eventually, the incision will split open and release fully formed SCP-2386 instances. A hive dating back to the 13th century was found, resembling a wicker basket. A few remaining SCP-2386 bodies were found. They resembled textured wheat and corn dollies. Okay. Appearances aren't always what they seem. What might appear friendly and cute to you could be a facade for malicious intent. Keep your wits about. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that actually, for once, it was not bad. Trying to see if there's anything else bad with it. This is, I just noticed it being a shape of a sofa. Okay, that was correct. Okay, let's see. It's true. Well, we do have to give a high score for removal of characters because. Dr. Shaw and the D-Class were not there. They were both removed. And they did leave vital information about, like, them infecting them in their dreams. And showing that it those infected will have depression-like symptoms when being removed away from 2386-1. So big, vital information just cut and discarded. Yeah. So yeah. So I'll have to say removal of characters are three because all characters were removed. All of them. Added gore and violence. Hey. Honestly? That for first time it'll probably be a zero. Because they only showed how they would act. They Pretty much. They only show with how they would act, truly. There's one thing I want to... There's one problem I have. There's one problem that I have. With that, so I have to say zero. They didn't really add anything. To, with the defense from the plot of the article. There's one problem I have. Is when they introduced the it, boy. They didn't state the spring or summer. Till the very end. They just said that they, they just went over there. They didn't state what time of the year. That's why I got shocked at first. Hmm. Also give this a zero because they didn't really. Well. Yeah. They didn't get rid of women. Could have been trying to do a plot twist type thing. Yeah. At the... Yeah, they did do that, but... Probably not in the best of ways. Of best of ways. They did deviate. And leave important shit out of the article. I can't tell if a two or a three. Not a four. But it's definitely a two or a three. Because they did leave a... Important chunk out. Hmm. Either of those I can't think of. 
Well, I, I think because they left an important, really big piece of, of importance. Probably a three. Because that was, like, pretty big. Because the kid didn't show depressing, like, symptoms for being gone for so long. Yeah, as well as the dreams. So, yeah. Alright. Wow, this is something I haven't seen since the first one, Bookworm. We actually have a 50%! Yay! Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. 